And pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may also do so in the following manner. Uh, this will be posted later to the town's website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can be adequate, that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So now to do a roll call and to assure that everyone uh, has audio that is working. Christy. Here. Very good. Eleanor. Here. Rachel. Here. Matt. I'm here, thank you. Very good. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. And uh, Robin did confirm that she she cannot attend. She is uh, recovering still and just resting as she should be. And Leah is going to be late. Um, I, I saw that email come in, but I didn't get a chance to look at it while I was in transit. So I'm not quite sure how late. Um, so we are here to begin our uh, deliberation meeting. Um, has anyone reviewed or ha have we all reviewed the uh, minutes from the prior meeting? And if so, can anyone make a motion to approve those, please? Motion to approve the minutes. These will Seconded. be from, thank you. Okay, I'll take the, the roll call now. Christy? Yes. Approved. Okay, Rachel? You have to, you have to unmute. Rachel? Sorry, I couldn't find you all for a second. Yes, I approve okay. also. I'm, I'm also a yes, and um, you two already first and seconded, so all, all, that is approved. And um, now we will start going going through the uh, grants deliberation. So on Monday, I sent out uh, the the scoring for this, and. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost, guys. Uh, let let me share my screen with the the the, the scoring that we, we did collectively. So this is a file that's dated the 14th. Is that correct, Julianne? I'm sorry. Say that again. This is the file that um, is dated the 14th of November. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And. Mm, that's not it. Okay. <clears throat> so I sent this out to everyone sorted in in two two ways. So one is uh, by the the book order. If we were having the book printed, which basically goes uh, alphabetically by the applicant name. And, and then the other one is compiled uh, or sorted by by the, the scores. So in this case, uh, it starts from uh, anything that was collectively averaging uh, a perfect score, which there was one, down to those that were uh, uh, much, much lower. But we did give credit to, to everything. Um, and I believe Matt and I agreed that we were going to still proceed by going uh, grant by by grant. And we're going to do this this year 
by setting setting a, a, a time clock, if you will. So who wants to volunteer to be timekeeper for us? Thank you, Rachel. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just kind of see how this, this goes as we, we do it, but since we have 91 grants, uh, I'm gonna set this for, for seven minutes per grant. So uh, we'll just start here with, with the time and talk about uh, what's entailed in this grant and um, what we're going to be looking for is in, in the discussion to start with, is there anyone who particularly champions, you know, this particular uh, grant um, and to come to an agreement roughly about whether we uh, one, whether this meets our guidelines, right? And then two, and we're not running the clock yet. Two, uh, if we're all in agreement that it that it does meet our guidelines, you know, would we fully support this, partially support this, and and why? And I apologize, I'm not more high energy tonight. I really <laughs> wanted to bring so much more to this when we, when we set up the new system. So, Rachel, can you could you start the clock now? Um, sorry, before you get started with that, I sure. was going to ask you, okay, so we're going to go through all of that first, um, the discussion first, right? Because I had the question for you and Matt before as to whether we, um, as a council, want to talk about agree on the any amount of money we want to set aside for activities. Yes, thank you for, for reminding us. Later and earlier. Uh, I, I'm open to doing either or, or both. Uh, so, um, do you happen to have the, the email with those numbers, Rachel, as far as. Yeah, I can pull it up. The one that, um, that would be great if you could pull that up and share with us. Um, um, no. um I don't want to like take up, you know, time from the meeting. Um, no, no, th th this is Im important. And yet, as you're pulling it up, I would I would add that um, the first and foremost thing with the grants themselves is do they meet our guidelines or not? Right. Mm -hmm. And the process that we're, we're attempting to adopt here is going to be to get the sentiment of where the, the council members are on each grant, as far as how strongly uh, we, su we support it at, based on public benefit. And also this year we've amended the guidelines so that we can add in to be able to, to sort for a, a variety of, of different kinds of events. So previously we couldn't say, look at, you know, uh, vocal classical music performances and and say okay well we can rank these against each other it really just had to adhere to the guidelines we've added in new guidelines this year that lets lets us also assure that uh we have different kinds of events right so but at, at the very end of this as far as how much we might hold back to do something for our uh that the council is sponsoring can really kind of be be taken either at the beginning or the end, because we can just look at it as a percent to total either way. Okay, if that makes sense. So, but please, do you, do you have those numbers? I do. Do you want me to read it, or do you want me to screen share? Yeah. So, so um, what's what is the total number that we have for we have, for grants? Um, we have a total of seventy one thousand eighty three dollars available for direct granting. Of that, mm -hmm. fifty-three thousand eight hundred is our allocation for this year. We can, at mm -hmm. our discretion, use up to twenty percent of the fifty-three thousand eight hundred allocation, which would be ten thousand seven hundred and sixty, to fund local initiatives. Mm -hmm. So, and then as far as local initiatives, that can be everything from things like we're doing with Amherst Media for the, the disability awareness video. Um, it can be things like Pecha Kucha. Can anyone else recall some of the things we discussed that might be of interest? For the like extra funding, I'm sorry, I forgot. 
Yeah, so as Rachel was saying, we can take, was it 10%, Rachel? Um, 20% based on 20%. the that, um, Yeah, 20%, although I can't, I can't imagine we would ever vote to take 20%, you know. Um, so generally, you know, we're, we're trying to balance one it's it's in our our charter our mission to to get funds into the hands of people producing culture right? right yeah so but on the other hand we can use up to 20 percent of funds to kind of seed uh culture and activities as as well mm -hmm. and for instance when we looked at doing pecha kucha before i think we had somewhere between 600 and 800 dollars set aside from that and the intent with that was always that we were going to request donations and worst case we expected to to break even but the intent was to actually raise additional funds through that so that was you know the, the council changes year to year so as as to where this council is this year, but that that would still be my my sentiment that if if we're taking on and doing something additional, it really is either to benefit culture in the way that the accessibility pieces that we're doing with Amherst Media highlights uh, a key initiative that we think is important to the to the you know not just the local community but you know larger community uh, or if we were to take funds out, I would like to, to see that be something that actually brings additional funds in. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all something that we can discuss and, and vote on. Um, but first and foremost, I think we feel pretty strongly about getting the funds out to the people producing the culture. So Rachel- Hey, Julian. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, Don't apologize, I'm super just... multitasking with kids here. I apologize to everybody yeah. in advance and thank you for I know everybody's gonna stretch thin right this time of year. Um, I just wanted to put the reminder out there. I know that uh, Eleanor and others are thinking about it, but you know this this big block party for the arts and culture for the spring that we mm -hmm. discussed with Gabrielle a couple of meetings ago, and then we've discussed it sort of ongoing since. That would be an mm -hmm. area that is gonna need additional funding, and and so I think um, I would like to advocate to maintain that on on our radar and and just make sure we don't lose sight of that. So, Okay, and and was was there an additional grant that we were able to apply for, um, as the cultural council, where we may get some additional funds from another source for that? Yeah, yeah. There's a small twenty five hundred dollar grant that we have voted this this council voted on, and we did apply for it, Eleanor and I. Um, Thank you for the twenty five hundred. But you know, this is like a twenty five thousand dollar undertaking, so it's it's worth um us bearing in mind and it would be a venue for our grantees um many of them mm -hmm. to sell their products if they are artisans of that sort to you know show off their work um mm -hmm. so i think it's something that would have a lot of synergy for the arts and culture of our community and i don't know i, I thought we had a lot of good um yeah uh ideas and energy around it when we discussed it before and so you know i i agree with you that we don't have to make a bottom line decision tonight, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. And we really don't need a bottom line number yet. We really need to just start looking at these grant these grant applications. But I just yeah. I just want to make sure everybody is, has that in mind. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about it, um, Eleanor or I would be happy to um, share. Actually, we can share out the application that we submitted for the um, for the 2500 mm -hmm. to this group. So folks can see it's a, um, you know, we've been looking at drawing funds from the cultural district, the business improvement um, district, us, and then you know other kind of local community partners like banks and stuff to try to fund this thing and pull it off and throw a, like an arts or arts and culture themed block party parallel mm -hmm. to um, the fall you know sort of regular block party. Okay, so two quick questions. Didn't we say this one would be in the spring? That's the parallel spring parallel to fall, late spring. No. Matt yeah. might be. Yes, May. It'd be in May. Okay. Perfect. And then the the other big number you threw out there was twenty five thousand. Is that the total anticipated budget for this event, or what um, they're hoping somehow we can bring to the table? No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be able to generate twenty five thousand. That's that's the overall budget for the event. Okay, Eleanor, do you have anything you'd like to to add about? No, I appreciate this? that, Matt. I was 
<laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry to cut you off there. Um, thank you, Matt. I was was gonna say that, but I wasn't even positive that that was coming. We anything was coming from us. So thank you. I appreciate you stepping in there. So with the twenty five hundred, that's the grant. Is that the grant that for like festivals and pro, um that the Mass Cultural Council has under a separate pocket of right? Yes. That's a, okay. Yeah. This is it's money we requested via a grant. So just like people come to us and request grant money, you know, it can come back as a goose egg. It can come back as partial, come back as full, but it's, it's a total, it's a total unknown. And we really appreciate that Eleanor and Matt did, did the work to, to, to support this. And it's something that absolutely we should be doing. You know, if, if we can apply for grant money uh, to create additional opportunities for our grantees and our community, that's great. Really, really glad we're, we're thinking this way and executing this way now. Okay. Is Wait. there any other? Yes? Anytime. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, let's go. All right, go ahead and start the clock. So uh, the, the first um, grant that we're going to review tonight is from the uh, 1794 Meeting House titled Quabbin Valley Pro Musica season and for I'm going to go from from the description here so Quabbin Valley Pro Musica is returning second year hiatus after the uh, pandemic and they want to celebrate their return to singing three songs about joy and making music together so this is six English psalm, psalms by Haydn for Elizabethan madrigals and on the the perils of love and uh, a mass by Stefan Stoker and it will be uh and, and then an, another lesser known Austrian composer and this will be presented in Orange Massachusetts on December 4th uh and then they also have a spring program that's being developed that will be presented in June at the 17 I think they mean the 1794 meeting house in New Salem, although 1974 was a fine year as well. Uh, so this is open to any any singers who are interested um, and, and even extended to the, to those of just whatever musical experience they can bring. And they're basically trying to just provide everyone with the opportunity to sing great music. Um, now, I, I believe there were, were notes from several folks about uh, both uh, there, there is a pay to participate. So I'd, I, I'd like to open the floor to, to folks for discussion and um, who, who would like to discuss some of the, the details of, of this about uh, some of the, the funding versus paying to participate. Any volunteers? I, yeah, I was definitely curious about that. Um, and I wasn't, I don't know if I can really speak to it because I wasn't exactly sure what our uh, protocol was there, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was a little, yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go back to my notes. So pardon me while I can uh, stop the, the share for just a minute here. So um, the notes uh, that I saw come in, which I will keep anonymous here, uh, one noted that it was $15 to attend, $80 to sing, and that there was a large uh, honoraria. Uh, another said that cost for performers versus audience. Um, uh, and another wanted to know, are they waiving participation cost as needed? And that Orange was was local, but quite, quite the drive. And it is uh, one event at this point while they're mentioning a, a spring event. Um, the December 4th date was the the one date that was confirmed. Um, and there was another comment that, you know, as far as just there's a lot of music when we get into to all of these. So, um, so my my first question is, is there anyone who truly champions this this event and thinks that it's very important that it um, be fully supported? No. No. Yeah, I think the 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 location in Orange um, 
is it's, it doesn't put it outside of, of us supporting it, not at all, but it, it does perhaps decrease the public benefit significantly. Would, would everyone agree with that? Okay. And the ask for this is $500 out of a, um, well, is that correct? Well, $12,515 budget. Wow. That does seem like a really large budget budget to produce a, a vocal, I'm really tired guys, performance, uh, especially when, when people are being charged to participate. I'm, I'm a little confused about that. Does anyone have any questions as to whether this meets our guidelines or do we all believe it meets our guidelines? <clears throat> I, I think it meets the guidelines, Julian. I was the one who commented on the size of the honoraria, which is what drives that budget. Um, I would I don't think it's something that we would deny outright just because it does seem like a you know a very positive cultural event, but I would I would advise towards a, a lower end of a partial fund run. I yeah, I, I would fully support that. Absolutely. Okay. So this this one it had a two for the rating, which is kind of getting up at like 75%, I think. Um, but I, I think as far as um, what we would fund, I'm thinking it's it's in the neighborhood of, of maybe 50% of what of, of their ask. If that, that's my- If, if, if that, that. okay. That would be the way. Um, Any, anyone else have some thoughts there? Yeah, I think I think I probably gave us a two, and I I think that the comment about the location also does make me want to scale my seventy five percent back a little bit. Um, so I think I think yeah. I would agree with both of you and with Rachel. Okay, so I, how does everyone feel roughly about? And we'll be f adjusting these numbers further, but what one hundred and fifty, or is would that be enough to to show support? Yes. Are we all agreed? Hello, Leah. Welcome. Uh, okay. Christy was starting the notes for you. <clears throat> yes, I was going to ask. I are they in the Real, drive? Hold, hold a sec. Hold just a sec. Rachel, how are we for time? Um, 30 seconds left. On OK. This one. All right. Thanks for stopping the clock. Go ahead, Leah. Um, are they in the drive? Are I started one, but I didn't email about it. Did Christy? Well, sorry. I think Christy didn't have access to the drive. So, Christy, if you just want to email Leah, what you? Oh, okay. Are you Perfect. doing them on paper? Yeah, but do you? Hey, I'm guys. a note taker. I mean, do you? I can type it. If you give me Leah, send me the link. I can type these in, and Perfect. then you could. Continue. Oh, thank you so much. And then Leah, you can, can just, I just clarify you can take over. something about the notes for these meetings. So the mm -hmm. deliberation meetings, we we do not intentionally include notes on all of our deliberations oh, or rationale back and forth. So really the, the notes, the minutes for the deliberation meetings really only need to reflect that we deliberated on the grants and then the packet right. of minutes that we post includes the cover sheet of our grants. That's the advice that we got from MCC this year um, because there was quite a bit of discussion about how much of the minutes should actually be you know, recording all the ins and outs of this stuff. Um, and MCC has advised us, and I think they've taken legal counsel on this, that the minutes should just basically just say, you know, tonight we talk about any actions we took, like approving previous minutes, or if we do come to a vote on our local activities, like those things do need to be recorded. But um, the deliberation discussion itself, that you know, the various pros and cons of each grant, MCC actually advises to not um, take detailed minutes on that because it's such a dynamic process. Um, and to and just say, instead just say, you know, we deliberated on the grant applications we received and include the full cover sheet of all the grant, that whole list of grants in our minutes packet. And what we usually do is we put all of the minutes for all the deliberation meetings up at once as a single packet of the minutes. So I just want to give that feedback in case folks are thinking that we need to capture every last thought. No, that's, that's perfect. And thank you. So I'm not going to be, do I need to keep track of like the time spent? Like, am I keeping track of we deliberated about um, like Amherst mm -hmm. Media Project, or am I just like deliberation of all? 
you'll you'll want to have a list of all that we deliberated so far we've only done the the first one in the book the 1794 meeting house got it and then the other thing leah just to get you up to speed is that because we have so many to go through something like 91 although there are some that are eliminated as duplicates and other things but we're time stamping the initial deliberation to to seven minutes for for each one so we can try to okay. move through these okay got it all right thank you so thank you i'm so glad you could join so moving on to the next um and actually i you all have this in the chart so i'm not i'm not going to share my screen unless someone finds that really particularly useful so the the next grant uh rachel did you start the clock yep thank you is from Am Amherst cinema it's it's a two-part um grant that is set up to to cover and first of all everyone's familiar with Amherst cinema right uh, i need to have like picture in picture here so i can be on two things but all right i'm just going to assume you all said yes so uh they are uh planning to continue pandemic related um protocols for immunocompromised moviegoers. And uh, so they will be having masked mornings on Saturdays and Sundays during these first screenings <clears throat> of the day. Face covering are required for all guests and audience, audience capacity is going to be capped at 25%. No concessions are sold. So clearly there's, a, there's an economic impact when they have to limit the, the audience size and not sell concessions, right? And then the other part of this is the June 2023 uh, presentation of a program with a film that's in honor of, of Juneteenth Day, and the event will correspond with the town of Amherst's uh, Juneteenth celebration, and this will be free to the entire community. So um, as, far, as far as the notes that I had come in around this, uh, there was strong support for the Juneteenth part. Um, others said that, you know, it's a lot of money, but over the course of the year, and um, that the cost of movie tickets might be around $6.50. So it's, it's kind of an interesting topic to discuss. One, we, we tend to be very supportive of Amherst Cinema. They do a lot of great work in the community. Um, and yet we can't always fully fund each, each group. And there are two parts to discuss. There's, there's the immunocompromised kind of help them offset the, the cost of continuing that for those members of the community, along with their plans to support Juneteenth with free access to meaningful, uh, cinema around that topic. So I will open this up to everyone to discuss. Is there anyone who champions fully funding Amherst Cinema? Oh, come on. This is the only one that got scored at a perfect 3.0. One of us, one of us must feel somewhat strongly about well, I think that's a Kucha one. Sorry, Christy, say that again. Well, Sorry. I was just I was just gonna say I I'm I will speak up as the to fully fund, to fully fund it. I think it's um I just think it's a great service. It's local. It brings in so much business into town <clears throat> as, you know, the art mm. house cinema. I mean, I just, I, it seems like these, this is the kind of thing we should be funding. Um, mm -hmm. Both of them. Um, and <laughs> so I, I, it's our own our own thing it's not music <laughs> i mean it, it, so i would i would support fully funding but i'm i'm fine with whatever so um thank you chris if they, anyone sorry i was just gonna say the only one that had the 3.0 i thought was the one with this the pecha kucha model you know what like i said at the beginning of the call i'm super tired so thank you for keeping me in line it was a 2.0 um, you are correct, Rachel. So maybe it sounds like we would be in favor of funding more than 50% anyway, right? Maybe close. Oh, I would think so. Even, even more than that. So 
have any fire yeah, it's a, range. It's an, the budget for all of this is over $76,000 and they're asking for 3,000 and 3,000, I'd have to look back at prior years, but it's probably in line with kinds of funding that we've given them before. Um, so yeah, I would support at least 2000, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we could all agree that we would fully support fully funding it if we had the funds across the board to do it. Right. Right. So I was a little surprised at the 2.0 kind of rating. Um, at, at least on mine, it doesn't show up as 2.0. I think what well, I'm that's looking the at average. That's the average. Oh, oh, I see. I see. Okay. Leah, you're muted. I was going to say, I think coming back to this one, once we've allotted some mm -hmm. money to see like starting at 2000 and then if we have leftover this could be a project where we're put leftover funds into i i would support that but i'd like to go a little higher to 2500 yeah and are we all agreed I mean, with 25 yeah. yeah i mean it these are not final but i mean i think the sentiment is there to support them is everyone okay with that yes all right and rachel and where it might be time? great oh. Go ahead, Leah. Well, I was gonna say it might be quickly, it might be great to strengthen kind of like how we strengthened our relationship with um, Amherst Media. We could have maybe talk about having like a short advertisement at the beginning, like these things we're doing with Amherst Media, we could see if they could be shown at Amherst Cinema or something like that. We can always ask that, but we can't make the grant disper Yeah, you know, no, of course. Funds dependent on that. All right. 50 seconds left. 50 or 15? 50. How many? Five, zero. 50. All right. Well, let's, yeah. let's move to the next. We are now discussing uh, for Amherst Community Theater. They would like to have theater access tickets for the Little Mermaid musical. Uh, so Every January, community theater stages a mu musical in Bowker uh, Auditorium on the UMass campus. And they do nine performances over two weeks, drawing an audience of 5,000 theater goers. And this year they're doing the, the Little Mermaid. And they, they specifically want funding to support ticket access. Uh, this program provides no cost tickets to local uh, low income families. And the way this uh, is administered is uh, they are able to go out to the schools and have the teachers who are aware of um, those students that are in, in the low income situation that would, would like to be able to attend, and they're able to uh, have a private conversation to offer those tickets to those uh, mm -hmm. elementary and middle school students and their families and uh, who, who wouldn't be able to pay otherwise. And uh, I think one of the, the really special parts of this is it brings a family together for theater. So it's not just the kids going as part of a field trip or something like that. It's their whole family experiencing theater together, which, you know, might might be something that, you know, wouldn't happen otherwise. So um, there, as far as the questions presented, there was some question is to how is this available to to everyone? Um, and as far as our, our guidelines, I, I, I do believe as far as uh, for this, because it's in the public schools and the public schools are, you know, for the community, the fact that it is, it, it, it is offered to those um, who have economic conditions, I, I don't think that, that that limits us because the performance is truly available to everyone, but these particular um, audience members would it's cost prohibitive for them so we were this is very much part of our mission that we we want to be able to have everyone experience the arts um so and and this one uh what was the uh, the compiled rating i'm not sure does anyone see that at the moment 2.64 2. or something yeah lots of support so with that um is there anyone who champions to the extent that we can fully supporting this 
So they're asking for $1,000 um, with a, a $74,000 total budget. Yes, I, I would if we have the funds. Yes. Yeah, I would fund this. Okay, I would too. Hugely Everyone, popular, I think would be great. Yes, yes, yes. I agree, and I think that that's kind of just for the purpose of comparison, like to you know, since we just talked about the Amherst Cinema one, because I think in in principle we would like to fund both fully if we can. Yeah. But given what the the amounts respectively they're asking for, and mm -hmm. how many projected. Um, are being served versus like, do, do you all feel like it would be fair to talk about a percentage that we are comfortable funding and then come back to, to the actual numbers? I guess it's the same thing, whether we're talking about percentage or the dollar amount, but just, I guess yeah. I know we're going to come back to percentages, but I think what we're trying to do right now is to gauge our alignment, right? So to the to the extent that we have those that that we all agree we would fully fund versus those that were it's all fair game to to tweak in the end but you know how much more discussion do we need at the moment if we all think that it's a worthy cause and it meets all of our guidelines and right. and it's it's not an outrageous ask would be the other thing right that the the cost that they're of their total budget and and for what they're um, providing the community, that seems very reasonable, unless someone disagrees. Okay. And Rachel, where is our time now so we can move to the next? Yep, we had we had two minutes left. So should we go to the All next right. one? All right, let's go. Yep. I mean, you can't complain if we're coming out and saying we fully support you. <laughs> Just leave it alone, right? So uh, starting the next, the Amherst Historical Society, I'm sorry, I said the H and Amherst, the Amherst <laughs> Historical Society, in all due respect, would like support for Strings at Strong. So this is an ongoing series of uh, chamber concerts in their garden space outside the museum. They are Saturday afternoons and feature a variety of local musicians. Uh, it could be anyone from a soloist, quartets, quintets, and um, they will have a minimum of four concerts. Uh, oh, no, they're talking about they did present four concerts in summer of 2022, and they're, they're, their audience has been growing. It went from 35 to over 100, so that's great that they're demonstrating that they're getting the word out and that people are responding and interested and participating. And um, they are also using this as a way to introduce people to the Historical Society Museum and uh, you know, to get them interested in, in local culture. The museum's open both before and after. So the only comments that we've had here is just there's a lot of classical music uh, and we might need to adjust for, for classical music. Um, is, when Oh, I was Go gonna ahead, say when I was looking at um kind of the breakdown of all of the music performances, one of the things I was looking for was the cost of tickets because we had a few that were like $25 a ticket, and then we had some that were $10 a ticket, and then some that were free. And the mm -hmm. kind of the ones in my mind that I had been prioritizing when we compare all these concerts was the ones that are free because those meet our accessibility goals more. But I guess if we do have to look at budgets because some people might just not have the budgets to have mm -hmm. free tickets. But this was one of the concerts that was free. So I would definitely at least, I mean, it is a big ask, but that is something to point out about this in specific. Mm -hmm. How do, <clears throat> sorry, how do we um, feel about when they're asking us for the entire budget? Well, and in this case, it is, Amherst Historical Society in Amherst with the event happening in Amherst for people of Amherst. But I get I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But whether or not they're saying, you know, we're going to go and try to get one business partner to give us <clears throat> some community partner. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't look to see if there was any in kind type. Um, they didn't. They didn't they have didn't. any 
kind. I mean, well, sorry, they say sponsorship from local businesses in addition to grant funding. In addition to grant funding, we'll seek sponsorship from local businesses. So then you're kind of like, well, they get, I think this should be because it is an Amherst thing. It's free. It's in the garden. There's all this energy that's going into the garden right now that mm -hmm. would be also nice to support. So I, I am, I am very strong on this, but I could see not funding them to the full, you know, over over 50 percent but not a hundred percent so wherever that falls so to, to, to add on to that when i look at the budget it's uh the bulk of the budget i'm fully agreeing with you is twenty five hundred dollars goes to artist fees to musicians and and yet we don't quite know how many stipends are included there um by the time you have quartets, quintets, soloists, but over four or five. So, you know, there there is kind of, let's say it's 15 musicians for five performances. Um, so three on average. So what that's, um, I'm not doing math in my head today. It's roughly $166 per, per musician um, for, for that aspect of it. I don't, I think percent to total in classical music, we're going to be scaling some some of it back. So, um, what what's a number that folks would feel comfortable with that shows strong support, but also reserves some some additional funds uh, for other events? Can't hear you, Christy. You're muted. Two thousand twenty one hundred something. Yeah. 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 I, I was I was thinking you know, 20, 21, 22. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to co come on the end of below all that, because I think I agree. Well, while it is an Amherst and um, at the same time, I think given the numbers that it's serving, like what the, 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 I guess, overall um, anticipated participants or audience. And, and I, I feel like this is a type of um, <laughs> proposal where, depending on how much money they or grants they actually get, they could scale <laughs> the performances accordingly, right? So they could just do fewer performances. Yeah, and I think their numbers served are mm -hmm. perhaps inaccurate. You know, if they had over a hundred people attending now, while, while we can't assume that 400 people would attend, but if we did, if we said four performances, 400 people, uh, that's $7 per person per ticket. That's it's maybe a little high as as far as for for a free event. It is free, you know, so we're we're covering that. But also realistically, uh, how much how many people can that venue accommodate? I don't know for sure. So that's that's I'm just putting that out there. I don't know. We know more than a hundred. You know, that that's yeah. So are are we all good with Christie's number of twenty one hundred? I know Rachel, you'd we could we could still end up lower. I don't know that it you know, it, it is Amherst, it is local, that's 75% uh, of their, their ask, right? Which I, I think is something that we, we can support. Yeah, I, I think I, I really do see Rachel's point there, um, but I would be okay with putting down 2,100 for now um, and maybe coming back to that. We're still early on in the discussion with 10 seconds to go on this one. <laughs> yeah, buzzer beater. Okay, was there an additional comment? No. Okay, moving on. Thank you. Uh, the next is for Amherst Regional High School. It's a transformative performing arts experience for all. And uh, this is about introducing middle and high school students to performing arts culture outside the dominant one. Um, and they want to invite uh, guest artists from surrounding metropolitan areas, Boston, Holyoke, Springfield, to teach in Amherst schools. Uh, it not only allows uh, the adolescent children opportunity to embody new moves, tunes. I'm sorry, I feel a little dumb for reading this to you guys because you all can read. Uh, but they want to provide testimony to uh, BIPOC communities that their background is an asset in our schools. So 
uh, by having these guest artists perform uh, art forms that originate Afrocentric and Latinx culture traditions, they can provide a richer and, and both broader uh, perspectives. I'm sorry, my contacts are really sticking in liberatory practices. Wow, within performing arts and culture languages and race. I'm bungling this. I'm sorry. Uh, so it's the there's no more engaging place for BIPOC students to witness their culture and heritage come to life than in the performing arts. Sorry, what was that? As someone who's in the high school, like sometimes I've witnessed some, I don't think I've attended one of these, but I know sometimes like every year, like we have one or two of these, but like not really this scale. And every time it's like, really seen as like very people like really love it and respond to it especially BIPOC people like it's just like mm -hmm. people really love these I feel like in the high school it's like there's sometimes people are brought in and people are like oh this is lame whatever but like these art things especially when they connect to people's cultures these are very beloved events. So Leah I'm so glad you're here because in reading the description I really don't understand what the event is. Can you can you tell us yeah. what, what it's like? So is so it like a an I know, assembly type thing? Is it during school no, hours? I the one I think I heard about. So the chorus teacher Todd Fruth brings in, um, like he usually brings in like someone once a year, kind of during. It's usually during school hours, and we'll like coordinate with a class but it's also like open to the public so like it'll be advertised and you can like use it as a field trip and leave one of your classes to join this and a lot of people do um it happens sometimes with like chorus trying to do songs from different cultures and that kind of thing and then also with the dance program I know last year there was like I think a hip-hop dancer came and I had a friend who was in the class and she just like loved it and it was just great and there was huge turnout I forget if it was after school or during school but it's like uh it's like a master class is kind of mm -hmm. what the dance term for it is um but it's um usually just like a professional that comes in and teaches their okay. style or song to uh, a class and then more so it's so open to the entire community? Or so it says here, I'm just going to read from the think application. This one is. Both the dance and choral department, choral departments will invite their families and friends to engage with their mutual work in the auditorium at the high school. So I'm imagining this probably is after hours because most yeah, of Yeah, maybe. Are and we're hopeful that the guest artists will invite our students to their communities for further exchanges. Um, I'd also like to add that as far as the budget, uh, it's it's basically all stipends. It's anywhere yeah. from, it's either a $150 stipend for one artist to a $200 stipend for the other artists and and then multiplied by the number of sessions that, that they're doing is how they get to the $2,500 number. I think it's a really lean project. It seems great. It has cohesion in terms of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to have, I mean, what I want to say, it has a captive audience because it's students in the high school. So that's great. Um, it's a pay it forward as yeah. far as it's, it's, it's culture now, but it's culture that stays with you. I mean, I would, I would say fund as much as we can if we don't fund the whole thing then they have one fewer person. I mean, it's not the end, you know, it's not the end of the world. They can still do something. So yeah, I guess I'm yeah. saying if we, if we had to fund it at 2200 or something like that, you know, if that was our initial decision on it um, and I'm comfortable with leaving it at the 2500 for now. I mean, I would leave when I look at the stipends, it's, you know, it's <laughs> much going directly to, to BIPOC artists who are coming into our schools and inspiring our students. Like, what? You know, it <laughs> what? Really and, and bring their families in as well to, to enjoy it. Like, what, what, 
more, you know, could we want? Totally. Yeah. And, and one of the, yeah. The yeah, they oh, I was going to say one of the biggest things that I don't even think they really talked about, they talked a little bit about, um, like introduction to cultures but I think one of the strongest things these have is like representation of cultures like for a lot of students having their culture like represented and celebrated and having a connection to that is just like such an amazing experience and I think it would be just very great to fund that okay all right so I think we are all set is there any additional comment here Rachel where are we with time 30 seconds. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so the next uh, grant is for Amherst Regional Public Schools, but uh, I believe for the middle school. Um, and and this is, well, no, it's the uh, the prior one was for the high school. This entity is, is uh, ARPS, so the entire school system for the Multilingual Parent Advisory Council. It's the applicant and it's a linguistic heritage celebration that will occur in April uh, in 2023, April 29th, and it will happen on the town common. And they've applied solely to us for uh, $1,320. And this is um, a celebration of the great quantities of languages spoken in our school district in the wider community. It's going to include music, dance, spoken word, performances, workshops, games, and food and drink, all promoting involvement with multidisciplinary languages, cultures in the community. So they had a celebration last year. It was a great success. They want to expand participation uh, from the wider community and they're seeking funds and, uh, for stipends for their performers, workshop leaders, and staff members, um, and to fund uh, publicity materials. And they also plan to have a multilingual poetry work workshop Last year it was held um, at the Jones Library, which will feature local multilingual poets of all ages. And just to kind of add add on to this, I can recall, um, well, my son, my youngest, was in the middle school. I think that these kind of events were held at the school, maybe on a Wednesday night specific to the school. Uh, and I'm I'm just so pleased to see this particular group in the community saying, no, we can do this on a larger scale, right? And and that's exactly what we exist for, for them to apply to us for funds to spread culture. So I will lead this saying I uh, will champion uh, fully funding this. I would agree with that because this is just kind of like follow up to the, the last grant as well in the same spirit. Yeah. Okay. I have one question about the budget. I was wondering, do if it's a public school, they have money aside to hire a police officer as security. Do you have to hire that, or is that? Uh, is, so this is this is not the public school itself. Uh, as well, let me. It is. It is ARPS's Multilingual Parent Advisory Council. So okay. the way I read that, that that's, that's not the school itself. So the, the prior grant was ARHS. It was the high school applying. This is the Multilingual Parent Advisory Council to ARPS. Okay. So as far as policing, um, it's a great question. I, I, I don't know, but I certainly myself wouldn't withhold funds you know, to them for that. Uh, also, because this event is not going to be happened at the high school or at any it's of going the, to be on the town. Oh, so that the town. Is under oh, got it, got it, got it. Pretty detail will be additional and separate is how I read it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. Okay. Are we all all good? Any further com comments? I was just going to say that, you know, kind of as we're going through these, because in the ideal world, we all would like to, to fund all the projects that we think, you know, benefit the town and is done by people in the town. And I think just kind of putting these last two in perspective with the strings at the strong, you know, kind of like how would we allocate limited funds to these respectively? That was just going to be my question. And we have two minutes and 45 seconds left. 
All right. Well, let's, let's keep going unless there's anything else. Okay. All right. So moving to the next, we have uh, an application from Antenna Cloud Farm. And it is the Antenna Cloud Farm 2023 season that they are applying for. Um, and this will be, um, the event will be summer to early fall 2023. So, uh, this group plans to um, expand offerings each year in breadth, vision, and reach. Um, and, and it's offered over the course of several months. They want to curate, produce, and host, uh, and, and present a rich and diverse array of live performances, workshops, and community engagements and gatherings. Um, this will include Antenna Cloud Farm Music Walk Town Takeover. This is in Turner's Falls, Great Falls, and includes a day long completely free uh, multi-space event and musical walk. And they plan to host world-class artists in residence and present concerts at our home space, um, which is in Gill, uh, and to expand upon the first year's experimental institute with opportunities for public engagement and is also similar to performances in Greenfield Town Common hosted by Stone Soup's Harvest Dinner. Uh, they're also planning on hosting at least one virtual event featuring a live performance uh, and interactive workshopping components, which is free and open to the public. So comments around this um, were that it really is not that focused on Amherst. And another person mentioned that it's it's good to be bringing talent to the area, but it seems like the only free event was the the virtual event um it is a small ask it's a 20 it's over twenty six thousand dollars for the budget excuse me just a minute um so it's a twenty six thousand dollar budget and they're asking us for 200 so um I'm sure there's much to be discussed, but you know certainly the the public benefit and how how this relates to Amherst, I think, is is um, something that we need to understand better. Is there anyone that champions fully supporting the two hundred dollars they're requesting from us? I, I do, Julianne. Um, this is a group that I followed all through last year. They just started up last year, and I wasn't able to make. I had I just had conflicts with all the dates that they had, but I think this is an example of a really cool, <clears throat> you know, locally grown underground arts movement type thing that has a lot of pop-up activities all around the region. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's it's mostly Franklin County, less than Hampshire County, but you know, I personally, we go up to Great Falls, Greenfield, that area a lot for cultural stuff. And, and I, I would like to support it. It's a very small ask. And to me, it's more of a symbolic gesture that just says that, you know, the ACC is supportive of regional things, which is something that we put we explicitly put into our guidelines this year. And I know this isn't what we had in mind maybe, but I think, this is a good example of the kind of regional regional um, activities groups that that I'd like to support. I think folks should look up this Antenna Cloud Farm. It's you know it's pretty decentralized. Um, I'm not sure that all of it is. You know I think it's a pretty wide range of different um, artists and talent and things like that. But but I think it's an interesting movement and really strengthens the artistic culture of of our you know just Western Mass region in general. So I I definitely support the, the full 200. And I agree with you, Matt. I, I voted also to um, fully fund the two hundred dollars um, for similar reasons as, as you just cited. And also, I think when we're, when I was looking at a lot of these applications, I'm looking at who else they were applying to. And in this case, they also applied it to multiple LCCs. And um, you know, as part of our guidelines, it's like Amherst and surrounding communities. So I think definitely um, for me that um, what they're applying for asking for us is quite reasonable and i'm personally quite happy to support fully funding them and i'm also in, in agreement i mean the thing that struck me was really making an effort to bring artists you know world artists you know in to, to our area and um you know when you look at that and then the perspective of how ambitious they are with all the different events they're putting in, on in different locations but that the the ask is simply two hundred dollars i don't see how we don't fully fund this 
Yeah, Eleanor? Sorry, that was a thumbs up. <laughs> that was a thumbs up, okay. Any other comments? Two right. minutes to go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, starting the clock on the next, this we will be discussing the Arcadia players and their 33rd season. 33rd season, there's some gravitas there. They uh, have a budget of $58,000, a little over that. They'd like $2,000 from us. And um, they are very pleased to have their first complete set of musical offerings since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and they have a new artistic director. And there are five programs and dates and venues confirmed so far um, where they will have, uh, I'm not gonna read them off. You can all read here as far as the, uh, different works it's 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 quite an impressive lineup uh one will be at smith college another will be at the resident resident i'm so sorry resident oh, this is how tired i am renaissance center in amherst um and another at mount holyoke college another at the uh wesley methodist church in hadley and uh bombic center in florence so they're really doing a quite quite a nice uh, regional tour and spreading um, their art around uh, the the area. So uh, some of the comments were that they are charging for tickets. Mm -hmm. So to, and to Leia's point earlier, it is nice to prioritize those that are at no cost. Um, uh, another person noted that there are many program dates um which which really helps as far as there's they're they're reaching a pretty broad audience i, I think they're 1000 people served with the five performances is um is probably pretty pretty accurate um did anyone happen to look at the the budget of this one and have any uh specific comments as far as the budget again it was a, a large budget of Fifty-eight thousand dollars, and looking to two thousand for for two thousand from us. So, is there anyone that champions fully funding the two thousand for this? Christy, you do. You're muted. I do I do because um, you know, and I feel like I'm saying yes to everything. I mean, the quality of this is really high. I mean, and I. Um, and I feel like it's a small portion of the budget. Um, you know, I, I would be on the upper end of funding it, I guess is what I'm yeah. saying. You know, I think I, you make a good point as far as like, there's Tanglewood and people t travel to Tanglewood. Oh, yeah. And know, but, but having high caliber work right here is equally important. I, I just want to support that. I, I think they're, they're extraordinary. And um you know, it may, maybe it's not the full 100%, but maybe it's an 80%. But, yeah, but yeah, I just think it's it's really excellent work. We we went to three of the productions this summer. It was great. And and so much of it really is is local. There isn't anything here where I don't know. In contrast, where I'm driving to Orange in the middle of a snowstorm, you know, I think it's it's really doable for anybody who's in Amherst who wants to make all of the events. So Eleanor. Did you Comment. Well, sorry, I keep just gesturing, but I, they're just affirming the thumbs up. I, I will stop the hand raising. Go ahead, Rachel. Oh, I was just gonna say that in in light. I know I keep raising this as we're going along, but um, in terms of um, how we want to, yes, because we can, you know, we have our opinions maybe about this grant and this grant and this grant, but we look at the total number of money that is being requested versus how much we have to give i'm just curious we don't have to answer this now but it's i'm just curious in terms of arcadia players versus other classical music whatever performances how do we want to prioritize or dealt you know like divvy up the available yeah. funds among them because i think looking at what they're asking for versus their budget is i don't know if that's necessarily um how we're going to be informing our final decisions because the reality is rea reality is that we have a certain amount of money to give and whether their budget is 10,000 or a thousand 
And mm -hmm. does that does that really impact our decision in terms of how much we want to give in terms based on what they're asking for? Do you see my question? Like, yeah, I, I I fully agree that that especially the nuance here is when you get into a group that's charging admission, they have a larger budget because they're charging admission, which is is great. It's great that they're of a quality that they can ask for admission. It's great when we can see that there's some sliding scale, so people, you know, who don't have the funds can can also go. But as far as simply put. They're only asking us for 2,000 out of 60,000 is somewhat meaningless. Our, the, the burden on us is to assure public benefit. And I think what we're discussing here is we see that 33 seasons, well, 32 in the past, and this is 33rd, we have high confidence that they can deliver public benefit. Now, to circle back to percent to total of, of classical music and how we're going to determine how much classical music programming we're going to support and which ones we're going to prioritize. I just don't see any way to get to that concept till we get through to the end. And that's one of the reasons we're time boxing this is to be sure that everything is at least introduced and discussed. We're all familiar with it. And because we are going to need that additional time reserved so that we can prioritize those things that we think bring the greatest value, but we can't do that till we go through all of them and some of these some of these have already fallen out you know we, we're, we're going to get to some as we go down in this list where the same uh applicant has applied more than once um so there the just keep in mind that the total number at the bottom right from the get-go it's not it's not accurate and and there are others that will fall out because they don't meet our guidelines and we really just need to look at, at the merit and how we collectively feel right now. And I, I, I think as far as would we fully fund this, you know, as far as public benefit, um, Rachel, I guess you're saying perhaps, perhaps not, you wouldn't know. But I mean, if you I, I, didn't course, bring all of those other considerations in. Sorry, that's that? the timer. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Timer. The time, we're at the timer. All right. Well, I'm I'm going with a bold stroke and leaving it as as two thousand to be later adjusted. I think I heard that support here, and there's no more time, so um, we'll have to come back. So the the next one is Jeffrey Baker is applying for um, Conway Fine Arts Concert Series Season Two. It's an interdisciplinary music program. It runs January through September of 2023. It's at venues in Western Massachusetts. The total budget is $6,900, of which they're requesting all of that from us. It's an interdisciplinary program of three concerts of classical music with drama, dance, and visual arts and professionals that are local to creative to Western Massachusetts and creative venues. Um, they want to foster a meeting place for ideas and to uh, build community through art. The, in 2022, they presented uh, Dvorak's Cypresses, which was a string quartet interwoven with adapted plays and performances by musicians and actors in a barn in Conway at a retirement community in Amherst and at Hawks and Reeds in uh, Greenfield. And they're citing that their 2022 season with six programs, uh, over 11 concerts in eight different venues and towns with 17 professional musicians on violin, viola, cello, guitar, and voice. And they had about 50 attend each concert. Um, so uh, they're also talking about in June, they had a, a world premiere quintet in, in blues, guitars, and strings, and other programs. And they did feature works by women and minority composers. So uh going into the comments i'm going to start with a comment from me which is that this is all citing 2022 and not really telling me what we're doing in 2023 um one of the comments was that they had uh eight towns and um and if we were to take the number say and divide by eight, why are they asking for the full budget from us, right? So if they want roughly $7,000 for eight towns, we should be paying less than $1,000. Uh, 
another is saying that they only applied to the ACC exactly and and yet it's it's not here they're they're not speaking to the benefit to the Amherst community um another person said positively that you know this is uh some different kinds of music it's it, it isn't necessarily classical music and another one said lots of money it's a lot of money and um we want to know why we're the only ones paying and and uh there is no concert occurring in Amherst so is there anyone that champions uh funding the full six thousand nine hundred dollar budget is there anyone that champion is there anyone that that doesn't want to fund it at all okay for those that do think it's of interest to fund please speak up I actually, sorry, I'm switching. I might be tentatively on on Rachel's side there for no no funding. I guess I, I don't really know how how often we do that. I don't know. It's, I guess it's my first time. I don't know if that's like a very strong stance to take or not. It's hey, it's fine to take a strong stance. Um, hey, this is the question of like, what is the public benefit? Well. You know? uh, I'm, yeah. I'm right there and I'm going to switch over to Matt here. What is the public benefit? It says that it's going to occur at venues in Western Massachusetts. I don't believe anything's confirmed. I think it doesn't necessarily meet our guidelines because it's not here and it, it's, it's not confirmed. Matt? Uh, I just want, I know we talked about this a couple of meetings ago, but I just wanted to read again the list of um, reasons that we yes. decline in the letter. And of course, our conversations are more nuanced than the letters are sometimes. But, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, number one is, um, or not obviously, your application was denied because, A, your project is not clearly related to arts, humanities, or science. B, your project did not provide enough public benefit for our community compared to other proposals. Uh, C, your project did not meet additional requirements outlined in our council priorities. Insert the specific priority here. So I'm, I'm not saying here nor there in terms of this grant. I, Personally, I would fund it at a, at a one eighth, you know, one eighth of what they're asking for based on the number of towns. I also can get behind zero funding based on, you know, kind of reduced public benefit. But I, I think that might be a little harsh. I think there is, you know, I think there is good, there is some public benefit to this. Um, I just don't think it's reasonable to ask us for the entire funding. Yeah, I, I, agree. I think it also boils down to at the end, how much money we have to go around and what our priorities are in terms of how much we want to give to whom. So. Yeah, I'm just speaking maybe on the more extreme side at this point. I don't know. So sorry, Christy, you were going to say something. Um, I just I agree with Matt's point, and I could go either way, like one eighth, which seems so um, token, yeah. or nothing. But um, that's my thought. Yeah, I'm I'm really good actually with a a token. Uh, support here from the point of view that it is a, a pretty big offering they're they're doing a lot of music it is it is different it sounds kind of like americana and bluegrass and um but also uh, the i wouldn't want to go more than a token support and i think one eighth frankly is too much in this case because they didn't tell us what they're doing in 2023 you know, it's it's just, hey, trust us, we did this last year, give us the money. And um, and it's for 150 people, suppose, the, the target. Is it? Thank you for bringing that up, because that's that's really low. Um, I, would, I would hope it was extended to more than. Hmm? The target serves as 150. So. Mm -hmm. And their tickets were $10 in 2022. And then they had local business ads in 20 it's all about what happened in 2022 um they have no in-kind support you know so it's, would a token be sorry would that be like a couple oh, hundred or anything I would a token amount or even that. Honestly, I would. I don't even know if we should fund it 
at all because they didn't like to say like venues in western massachusetts is just like yeah like west it's not even like in the valley like western massachusetts could mean like an hour drive i mean actually i don't know but like we don't know that they're accessible yeah we just i feel like we could be funding like this entire project that's taking place like an hour for like i feel like it's just like i don't know it seems really weird that they wouldn't specify anything about Amherst and then ask us for the entire budget. Time's up. I'm, I'm so sorry to interject. I just, I have to run off to rehearsal right now. Um, I, I guess I had written down wrong. In general, would these go like an hour and a half? Yeah, in general, we're trying to shoot for an hour and a half. Okay. And frankly, I, I don't really necessarily have any more I don't energy, as Matt said at the beginning, we're all stretched pretty thin. So thank you so much. Go to your rehearsal. We'll see if we can maybe get through one one more of these. Um okay. thank well, you. Uh, bye. Thank you. And good to see see you, Cody. Uh I'm I'm gonna go with a, a bold stroke here and 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 put this down as as zero funding and let someone come back strongly later to um basically lobby for why we're going to support it. I want to, I want a true champion to come in um, with a strong perspective uh, about how we can fund um, an event that's not been described for 2023, has, has no venues, has no letters of support for venues, um, et, et cetera. So continuing on, and we're going to, we're, you can set the, the timer, Rachel, but we're going to do Chew It Once because they're the same. Uh, it's the Emma and Belly Little Detectives bilingual book. The uh, applicant name is Cynthia Barrett. Sorry, I'm hearing an echo. Uh, Cody, you might need to mute. Can you mute, Cody? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. So they are requesting... Um, $300 for one of these and $350 out of a thousand dollar budget. They could only put one of these through. And uh, this is, uh, they want to finish a book that they started last year. And um, you can all read the, the, the description. Uh, for those of us that were here last year, uh, when we evaluated last year, it was because it's basically they're asking us to fund a self-published book. And, and, and while it's, you know, perhaps delightful and interesting, um, it, it, it's a, a, basically a, a self-funded book that has commercial benefit to them. Uh, and just I'm scanning through here as far as, as how it serves the community. And um, one of the things we were looking for last year was were they going to donate books to the schools or libraries or anything like that? And um, I'm not seeing that. I don't know if anyone else who read over the grant uh, saw any kind of support that would benefit the community specifically. So I will open this up to discussion. Oh, they, it says here they'll they'll once published they'll donate one copy of the book to the library so the entire community can enjoy this adventure for all ages and this this to me was a great disappointment last year you know you're going to make this self published book why aren't you giving so many copies to the libraries at, at the regional schools and and libraries beyond that so uh, yeah and also to follow up with that I think because we did see this last year, didn't we? And, and I think the other thing too, is they mention wanting to work with local partners, but it doesn't seem like there's been um, proof of any, having you know connected with anyone to do that. And it seems like there, there had been plenty of time to do so, right, between last year and now. So um, not seeing evidence of that was what gave me pause about funding this. Yeah. Uh, like you say, it's basically to cover the publishing costs, which is that really our role to to do, right? Yeah. So moving this along, is there anyone who strongly supports funding this at all? Does it 
I, do we all agree it does not meet our guidelines? Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would definitely just tell them search for inconvenience or grants that support options because a I feel we support more events versus individual projects. Yes, and we, we fully agree. And and we actually did, well, I'd have to go back to the letter last year, but somehow they, they didn't get the message as to why we didn't support and fund last year. Uh, so, but this really does not meet, meet our guidelines as far as um, really to, to access to the public. And so, Moving on, I, I would like to end at 7.30. I'd be willing to go over just a few minutes if we could try to do one more, especially since we, we missed Monday. Um, if anybody needs to, to drop immediately at 7.30, please alert me, but I'm going to go ahead with one more if I don't uh, hear anything. So the, the next one is from Ezekiel Baskin for Poetry in the Barn. Uh, it, it occurs April to June of 2023. Um, and they are asking us for $1,500 uh, for an event in Belchertown. Uh, it's a series of three free public poetry readings um, at the barn and studios in Belchertown. Uh, it features local poets and will offer a chance for Q&A and community conversation following each reading. Um, the C series will feature one reading per month for April, May, and June. And if there's demonstrated interest in available funding, readings may be added uh, in late summer and early fall. Um, it's going to feature a wide style of um, poets and explore a range of themes in their work. Some of the readings will take place during um, hours that are served by the Quaba connector so that they will be accessible for residents who don't own or have access to cars. Uh, it, it, this is following their sold out readings of Jenna Rose uh, Nethercott's debut novel, Thistlefoot, which took place um, in this venue, September of 2022. Um, so comments here were basically it's $250 per poet times six. Um, uh, another person said that it, it seems to be, you know, quite, quite expensive. Um, for, for an event uh, for, for spoken verse, I'm not sure. And another person mentioned the Belcher town location. So, so with that, I'll, I'll open it up for folks to discuss. And in the back of my mind, I'm uh, just wondering if anyone has um, experience with this venue and if it's accessible. I think we're all muted or we're speechless. I don't have experience with this venue. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, yeah, I don't have experience with the venue. I liked it because it was. You're Papa muted, Christy. <laughs> Let's see, Christy, you're trying to be oh, not sorry. muted. Sorry. Um, I was just saying I liked it because I like the project because it's poetry. It's different. It's not another music thing. Uh, you know, somehow Belchertown, it seems like. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I treat it as though it's the back of beyond and it's really not that far, that far away. So it feels like anything, you know, we tend to keep going in the other direction rather than going to Belchertown. So I thought that was kind of nice. Um, I I think it should be funded. I, I did think that the, the administrative, I didn't think that the salaries for the Poets was high. I thought the salary, the stipend for the series curator was a little high, but um, I don't know. I mean, that's, I would, I would fund it at some level. I would fund it at some level, maybe 50%. Um, mm -hmm. And they did ask for money from uh, 
Belchertown, Pelham, Palmer, Ludlow, New Salem. So I think that was good. Yeah, just the idea about the kid. How about we do half of that at 250? Yeah, I, I think I could support, you know, I, I support funding it. Um, Belchertown, it, you know, it's just over over the line here from Amherst. Yeah, there might be another town in the middle, but I, I would think we'd want to to fund it maybe maybe at a minimum 50% across. So I've asked for 1750, <laughs> oh, 1,500, but how do we all feel about uh, 750? Yeah. I would go higher personally, but I'm fine with 50% too. Anyone else want to go higher? I mean, it, it is true that it's, it's, it's poetry. It's different. It's, they do have BIPOC um, references in the application as well. I, I'd be happy to put it on the books as a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cody? Be and ten was seventy five percent if that's not too high. Well, none of these numbers are final, right? So they'll be adjusting. So for instance, the self published book that we just said does not meet our criteria, you know, now now when we look at the total number, um those that's taken out of the total. There was another grant earlier for 6,900 that um, we may not fund at all. So, uh, but in the end, we're just really trying to see how we collectively feel and we'll be, we'll be adjusting these numbers uh, further once we know really how much we have. And we'll be doing things like assuring that uh, the, if we're we have seventy thousand dollars to fund that 50 percent of that isn't going to solely classical music events and and if and for the classical music events that you know we're funding those appropriately for the community so i think we're we're good with rough numbers tonight so uh folks we are two minutes over and um i want to just check and look at the agenda um is there any any new business that is yes, Leia? You're muted. I was gonna quickly say, kind of, um, in response to like some of the things Rachel was bringing up, I was wondering what it might look like if I transferred some of the data and like made a um, like a Google slide sheet with just like all of the classical music with like some of the criteria, so we could compare it just to compare it to other things to make it more fair if that might be helpful or like looking at like all of the things I don't know another thing was like things I don't know would that be yeah, helpful I think, I think we'll need to do that towards towards the end but to conserve efforts I think we should do that um once we've gotten through the first pass and we know what's in what's out and um mm -hmm you know, uh, what's the total ask, right? Because some of these are falling out. They're no longer part of the total ask unless we have, we vote them back in. So uh, we will need that, but it's probably too soon. Okay. Um, I can start working good, on it. Good idea. Would I, would, be, I would wait would to I do be, it later. I was going to say, would I be allowed to do it outside of meeting time? Or is that, because I know sometimes you're not allowed to write things outside of meeting Mm, that would have to be done outside of meeting time. And, okay. and the, the thing is, is that we'd have to be very careful how we share it. Um, mm -hmm. But so I need to give it a bit more thought. And again, I think I think we're going to, to to need that when we do do the refinement of the numbers. But uh, we've got to get through everything in a first pass, certainly before before we're ready to, to start bringing that nuance in. For sure. So Thanks. Thanks it's, for thank running you for the meeting. To help meeting. With that. Thank, thank you all for being here. Um, 
if there is is nothing else for tonight uh would someone like to motion to adjourn sure i'll motion to adjourn <laughs> all, right. Right. all in favor yeah yes wow thank you thank you all i don't know the the date for the next one it's you're, you you should all have it in your calendar so we will we'll see you soon and um good night everybody we did great progress tonight thanks everyone yeah take care good night yeah. thanks for clock keeping and notes and bye <laughs>